Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. Abandoned Ship is a Reiner Knizia game about these rats on a Titanic type ship that is sinking and they're trying to get to the top to score the most amount of points. Now this is normally not a type of game that I would be into, but I have to say I played this with my family. I have a 9 year old and a 6 year old that were playing this and we actually had a very good time with it. So nobody controls any of the rats. And that's a little bit new for my family. And they kind of like that. Because sometimes they want to fight over which color they're going to be. Or which character they're going to be. And we're all of the characters. And you roll the dice. And based on what dice are, you can move certain rats. Now you get a scoring card at the beginning that tells you which rats you want to get to the top to score. But what's particularly interesting is whatever rat gets to the top first scores no points. And then the rest, second, third, fourth, and so on, they will score points based on where they're at. You can also get cheese, it gives you kind of bonus points, and you're moving up. And I find this to be a very fun family game. This is something that I would definitely play with, you know, older kids, where you're going six plus. You know, not the little small ones, but the older ones. And I think as they get older and older, that, that sweet spot might be between like seven and twelve before they get into very strategic games where that light, Family game, you're rolling some dice, you're making real decisions that matter in the game, but you don't have complete control, so dad can still lose, mom can still lose. It reminds me a lot of that Tiki Tapu game. They're very, very similar in that regard. Now, Abandoned Ship was a hit. I don't think that the rat thing went over. You know, my kids were like, wow, if it had been cats, my daughter would have went crazy over it. But the rats were okay, they're cute enough, and they look nice when they're going up. And you get the little cheese, and it makes sense they're on the boat. So that works all thematically. So this is one that, you know, I probably wouldn't recommend for gamers. But I think that it had enough good decisions in it that people will like it. I think the theme with, like, the Titanic ship, although maybe a little bit outdated now when the movie was released and bigger, it's still something recognizable that people know. And it's kind of funny to be like, yeah, the Titanic, but what about the rats? Here they are moving up, and so forth. So... I think this game could be a hit for a lighter game. I think it has aged fairly well. The components are good. The package together is good. And I think this is something you will enjoy. There are There is some luck in it because you're rolling dice and you're choosing what you want to do based on those dice. There's not a whole lot of ways to mitigate it. You move what you can. But it's a fun little package that's great for families. Here's Abandoned Ship, which is a really, really cool box cover art with these art, these uh, rats jumping off the boat onto this. See Titanic in the background. Very cool looking, and, and it's very attractive. And you have this like theme about it. I really need it, even though there's not much theme to this at all. Here's going to be your board, which will be super long. And it has this little piece in here that you'll be pushing up, and I'll show you that in the flow of the game. But it's so long on purpose. The rules, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. You're going to have this little contraption that you'll have. This is where the board will be pushed up into. So you can be falling into the night sky. Then you're going to have the rats that you'll be pushing up. You can see the different color dice and the little tubes that you'll be utilizing. These cardboard is really nice. The box is way too big for what you need. I mean, there's hardly anything in here other than this board being so humongous. There could have been another mechanism to push this up, although it's really neat what you get. Just feel like this box is way too big. But these rat ones are really cool. They remind me of something off Ratatouille or something. I think they're really neat in a different color. So there you are. That's the rule book. You're going to get this one page. It's just front and back. You can see the rats coming up here with some artwork and some instructions in here. No picture of the components. Boo! But the setup is here and you start playing the game through. And you can see the back of what happens if it sinks and the, and the cheese and how you score it into the game. Very simple game. I think the rule book is very colorful, although I wish it would have had pictures of the components. First thing it is you're gonna, when you set up, is put the ship inside this contraption here, which would just kind of be a way. And as the game goes and you start to sink, you'll come through this until the ship hits the water, and boom, everybody dies. So it's kind of a neat little thing that will be put in here. It won't all fit on the screen, but I'll just kind of show you the bottom here, just kind of how it all starts out. So set the game up. You're going to put these cheese tokens out, and those are just put out randomly. All the rats are going to go on the number 10, dice by this. These ship tokens you will shuffle and just put there, and everybody will get one life preserver. And what this is going to tell you is that you're going to score for blue, purple, and yellow, where if you had this one, red, orange, and yellow. So what color rats you want to move up is dependent on which one you got. 
So we're going to play as if yellow, purple, and blue. Now this would be hidden from everybody. I'm just going to put it there for our own reference. On a turn, you will roll all the available dice, and you will see what your result is. If you were to choose a number, let's say this blue four, very simply, you would just move the blue one up four. If you choose one with the arrow, then you can choose a color. In this case, white would be wild. You can choose any one you want, and it moves up to the next one in front of him. So let's say purple was here, blue was green, and I wanted to move green. I got the white arrow. I can choose wild, any color I want. I would move green up to be with blue. So the arrow is going to take any rat up into the next rat ahead of him. You're also going to have this anchor spot right here. So if you have the anchor and you want to utilize this, you would take that color rat and move it backwards to the next rat behind it. In this case, I'd move green back. If you have a circle around it, then you can move any one you want. Also, this could be a wild. So in this case, even though it's a black die, I could move red up three spaces on the board because it has a circle. Now here's the thing. Whenever you use a die, so let's say I use this one to move the red like I just did. This die would now come out of the pool. I'm going to set it over there. And the next player would just roll whatever die are left. And that's how you kind of start keep moving different ones. Now, in this case, purple... Say I'm not scoring purple, so I could, even though I am, let's say this player who rolled this is not, I could spin this, move red again, and then this purple die would be out of it. So if you're going to use a die, I could have moved red four, but I was better off leaving this in the possibilities of being rolled if I'm trying to score red and getting rid of the purple die, which I'm saying this player is not trying to score. If he was like this, red, orange, and yellow, because I leave this in the pool and get rid of that. So that's one possible strategy. Let's say the next player rolls a die, purple and black are out of it, and he was able to roll an X. Look at this. So he can move red up one space, which would give him this chi. The first person that gets there gets the chi, which is an extra victory point. But because it had an X by it, it actually doesn't go over here and out of the pool. It would stay in the pool and be able to leave. So if you're the red player, those were masterful moves that you just saw happen. So whenever all the die are used and you're left with just one, the ship is going to sink. So you would mark this over. It's got four on it. So that means where this was one, go one, two, three, four, and the ship's going to get even further back. And let's say you had green on three and you move back four. This is going to come out of the game and he's going to drown. So you want to drown colors that are not the ones that you're trying to score. Now, one thing to note about the top of this is, is that you're trying to get to the top. But the first person out will actually not score any points. So say Red was the first one out, he's X. He's not worth any points. And if Purple became the second one out, he's going to be worth five points at the end of the game. Next one's three, and next one two. So you don't always want to bust the one that is your main guy. See, I'm trying to score Purple here because it will be worth zero points. At the end of the game, people re reveal who they're trying to score. You score points. Based on the final, you add any cheese that you would have earned during the game, and whoever has the most victory points wins the game. Who should buy this game? This is a great family game. I recommend it for anybody with kids in that sweet spot between like 7 and 12. I think this will go over very well. You can play it with younger kids. You can play it with older kids. If your group is looking for a lighter game to play, maybe in 30 minutes where people are showing up, you can play with a large number of people. There really isn't any reason why you can't play with an infinite number of people other than it just the downtime. It would never come back to you. So even though the box has a certain number of people, I think you can squeeze that extra person in if you needed to, and it wouldn't mess things up too much. Or if it did, it doesn't really matter because it's the type of game that it is. This is not something you're going to center a night around. It's not going to be your main event. But it is something that being your repertoire that I like. The theme is cute. The components are nice. If you're wanting a Reiner Knizia game, this is one that I might point you towards that's not too meaty. It does what he does and has a cute theme attached to it. And for that, I could see this one being a big winner for your family. Abandoned Ship. Keeper! Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. Let's us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing.